Hi, everybody, and welcome to Wellness 360's educational series again on Friday night. So today we have a very special guest. We have GVPT's own uh, PT from the Webster Clinic, Andrew. Say hello. Hello, everyone. All right, so today we are going to be talking about low back pain and exercise. So I feel like the very first and foremost thing that we need to do is talk about why people have low back pain. So I'm gonna let Andrew stop and then we'll kind of break it down a little. So go ahead, Andrew. So many people have low back pain. It's very common. Um, according to the um, World Health Organization, 60 to 70 percent people have low back pain uh, at some point in their lives. Um, you go into a room with 20 people, you're probably going to see 15 who have at least had it at some point if they don't have it already. There's a lot I of I feel like can... it's the number one leader in, um, in unemployment, um, yes. in disability. It is number one in, in missed days worked. Um, it can be a major cause in people becoming inactive or sedentary. And that can actually, it's kind of a, a, a circular effect because they become sedentary and then their back pain can worsen. And that's one of the causes is a sedentary lifestyle, um, posture, um, being um, muscle imbalances like tightness, poor flexibility. Those can all cause different um, ways of causing the back pain. I just recently spoke with someone um, about low back pain and they were mind blown that just having tight hamstrings could cause low back pain. So you don't think about the um, imbalances from, from our job and sitting all day and you get those tight hip flexors, you get those tight hamstrings because they're both in a flexed position all day long and then you go to stand up and it just wreaks havoc on your spine and your pelvis. Yeah, and those hip flexors, they're, um, they attach from your spine to the front of your, your thigh bone, and they can cause, they, they're in a shortened position during that time period. So then when you go to get up, they're pulling on your spine and creating a forward tilt in your pelvis, and then your go back, your spine gets that extra stress on it. So I feel like we are talking to the entire population right now being home all of our non-essential workers and some of our essential workers that are working from home remember when you're sitting all day you have to get up and move because our body becomes so it, it its job is to waste as little energy as possible so if you're sitting all day it's going to hold those muscles it's going to shorten those muscles so that when um when you're sitting all day, it doesn't have to expend that energy to keep those muscles flexed. So then you go to stand up and they're shortened and you end up with that lordotic posture, you end up with that, that glute, which you have no idea how much the glutes have to do with your low back pain. Those little tiny muscles, the multifidi and all those little muscles that run up the spine get weak because you're not using them, you don't need to use them. Exactly, and, and the glutes, they, they're shut off when you're sitting all day. If you're sitting for a short period of time, it's okay. You know, we all have a lot of times there's computer work, but you get those desk jobs all day long. Exactly. Those hip flexors shorten, the hamstrings shorten, the glutes aren't doing anything. And then the core muscles, they're shut off. They're not doing anything unless you're very aware of your posture. And that actually slips into one of the other causes is posture. Yes, and we're gonna to get to core in just a minute. We got lots of good stuff on core. So let's get back to kind of what causes low back pain. So we had, uh, just, to, just to review, poor posture, which it can be poor posture, and sometimes there's diagnoses that go along with that kyphotic um, spine. So we have osteoporosis, Parkinson's are two major ones that we deal with all the time. And exercise is really, really great too. It can't 100%, and correct me if you think something different, Andrew, it can't be corrected 100%, but it can be prevented from getting worse. And there is a lot of corrections that can be made. Correct, yeah. And um, there are some cases where, yeah, if you have just general tight muscles, you can correct that. If it's one of those underlying conditions that, that lead to that posturing, you can at least slow down the worsening of it because the more you're flexed forward, that increases the pressure on the discs and on your spine. So that pressure is important to try to battle as best you can. 
And there's exercises strengthening your, your back muscles, stretching some of the tight muscles that shorten in the front to try and open you up and open you up into a better postural position. Yeah, so these things, we'll talk a little more um, and a little bit with the exercise portion, but these are really important things to know that some people, they just keep going down further and further and they don't think that there's anything that you can do. And there's so many things through physical therapy, um, through Genesee Valley Physical Therapy or through our Wellness 360 programs that we can do to combat that that postural deficiencies that you have from from whether it's a disease or whether it's just sitting at a computer all day, maybe you're driving all day, but 90% of our life has to do with forward motion. Yep. So just finding that balance. Again, we talk a lot, um, Jay Verna and I, and everything always seems to come back to balance, just finding that balance between um, your lifestyle and the appropriate exercises to combat your daily lifestyle which is our next point, bullet, is lifestyle. <laughs> so um, Andrew talked about this for a minute. So, um, you know, it's just like that sedentary lifestyle. There's people that sit a lot. So I'll let you take over if you have anything more from there. Yeah, sedentary lifestyle. We talked about sitting at a desk. Um, people that, you know, I don't want to go with the couch potato term, but people that just aren't active, even if you're not working at a desk, if you're just inactive and don't like to get up and move, for whatever reason, I mean, it's important to move. It helps the circulation. It helps keep your flexibility, your strength, your core muscle strength. So it's very important to keep moving in whatever way and finding ways, things that you enjoy is a good way to help you stick with it. So I'm gonna plug this early only because it just triggered my mind. I don't wanna forget. But in our new Wellness 360 online platform, we just um, launched a low back pain section. So um, Andrew just brought up a good point. Maybe you don't like to exercise and it's not something that's for you. Just to let you know that in this online platform, we have 15 minute increment of exercise that you can do standing. You never have to get on the floor. Some of them are on the floor, but you can make choices. We've modified everything and you can commit to 15 minutes a day. Like, I feel like that is such a small portion of time. Um, obviously, if it's gotten to the point where it's already causing back pain, you're going to want to hit physical therapy. You're going to want to go to GVPT and you're going to want to find that, um, that balance before you can get to that kind of that bridge point between PT and the exercise. The, um, the body mechanics type of low back pain, you know, are lifting um, techniques and a lot of people work and they do that repetitive motion over and over and over again at work. So um, talk a little bit just about body mechanics and um, maybe just give a real short description of what's good. Yeah, so body mechanics are a very big part of um, low back pain and, and causing it. Body mechanics, if you don't keep your back straight as you're lifting, you put a lot of increased forward bend stretch and um, pressure on your discs once again. So that can cause pulled muscles, um, disc injuries, and it, it's a very um, painful experience if you do it incorrectly. So good mechanics are trying to lift with your legs. So if you have to pick stuff up, engaging your core, keeping that tight, keeping your back straight is very important. And I can actually demonstrate with my friend Layla here, since she's on my lap. If you were to keep your back straight, bend at the legs, and then pick up and keep the object close to your body. You don't want to be lifting away from your body if you can avoid that. That increases the stress to your spine. I'm very, sorry, very this good is the best Thanks example ever. <laughs> all sorts of animals running around here all right so and then the last but not least we have body type so we have that again with body mechanics we have that repetitive over and over and over motion um and then we have body type you know what sometimes it's inevitable i don't know of anyone that has went through life and not had back pain at some point in their life um the spine takes a real beating with with everything that we do in life um, and unfortunately, when we're kids and we're in high school and we're playing sports and doing things, or like Andrew, an adult playing school sports, you know, you don't think about those long-term consequences that we get sometimes. Um, but you got to sometimes weigh the joys and the exercise of what we're doing with, with the long-term effects. 
but body type people like myself that have that lordotic curve and tommy we're going to throw you under the bus too uh, we have those lordotic curves and you know what it's just inevitable so the one thing that i find as long as i'm doing my core exercises which we're going to move to next um, as long as i'm doing my core exercises or my pilates or my yoga i'm fine I have no back pain, but the second I get lazy and I stop doing those things, the back pain just comes back. Yeah. And um, so there's a lot of different, um, we're all different. We're all made different. We all have different body types. You mentioned your lordotic curve. For those who don't know what that is, your lumbar spine, your low back is supposed to have a little bit of a lordosis. And some people are just built that they have a deeper lordosis and it curves deeper, which causes more compression in their low back. That results in a forward tilt of their pelvis. I'll just stand up, forward tilt in their pelvis and a deeper curve. You wanna have a small curve and keep the pelvis fairly neutral. Some people have the opposite in their back and have more of a kyphotic curve, it's called. So that can set you up for, predispose you for back pain. And just like Beth mentioned, you can do exercises and keep the flexibility and keep the strength and keep the back in as best a position as possible without having this chronic back pain develop. Um, other types of body type that could be an issue, if you're overweight, that increases stress on the spine. Um, some people, if you're too thin and you don't have the muscle strength or the muscle control, it could be all sorts of body types, but then there are those predisposed things that we can't do anything about. And um, so you find ways to try to, to control that and, man, and uh, manage that. Absolutely, yeah, just being thin is nice, but it's not always healthy. Sometimes people can be very unfit and very thin at the same time. It's just, uh, I call it the blessed body type <laughs> <laughs> of just naturally being thin. But so we're gonna talk a little bit about core strength because I think core strength is the most important thing when we're talking about low back pain because a lot of times people um and i don't know about you andrew but i get this all the time they say well i do 100 setups a day there's no way my core is is not firm so let's let's put it on the record your core is not only your rectus abdominis those wonderful six-pack ab muscles that believe it or not we all have we just some are hidden <laughs> but um the core is not just those front abs. So let's talk a little bit about that, Andrew. Yeah, so those beach abs that, that you were speaking of, yes, they're important muscles, but they are not alone in the core. The core muscles make up a bunch of stabilizing muscles, obliques. Um, one of the most important ones is the transverse abdominus muscles, pelvic floor muscles. Those all make up your core muscles. Their job is to help stabilize your spine. So sit-ups, great looking exercise. A lot of people love them. They can be beneficial when you're laying on your back and you go to get out of bed. Beneficial, definitely helpful. Not going to stabilize your spine because you do a lot of those. Remember earlier I mentioned how that forward flexed position increases stress to your back. If you're doing a lot of sit-ups over and over, you're bending your back forward over and over again. So core muscles are those deep stabilizing muscles surrounding your spine because I like to think of it as like a, almost like a tree trunk. Your, your low back, your lumbar spine is trying to stabilize while your limbs are doing activities. So that's why you try to keep your back straight when you're lifting. Those muscles are not built. They're not meant to take the load of lifting. They're meant to stabilize while you work together. And the core muscles, one of the other things they do is transfer some of the forces from your legs up to your upper body. So they help control that mobility while you're while you're lifting something, especially if it's a heavier object. Absolutely. So if you want to remember anything from this workout, core is stability, not mobility. We're not supposed to have this large, massive amount of motion in our spine. We're supposed to be able to be functional and we're supposed to have nice rotation and things, but when you're doing core work, it's the stabilizing where your spine is in a nice neutral. Now there are reasons to do um, extensions and there are reasons to do flexions depending on what type of back pain that you have. But if you have an osteoporosis diagnosis, you should never be doing any form of crunches 
or sit-ups. It is not good for your spine. It puts your spine in a really awkward and unstable position and can lead to back fractures. So we do, I teach the osteoporosis program, and that is one thing you will never find is anything forward bending, anything crunching. So if you are out in the gym and you're taking a popular fitness class and they're having you do a whole bunch of crunches, just don't do them. Find another way, hold a plank or do something like that. But we want your core strength. Um, so let's talk for just a minute about that lovely transverse abdominus muscle. That is um, for all of us females who have ever wore Spanx or, or an older term of a girdle, that is what that does. So it actually attaches from the spine and then attaches to the fascia around the front of the body. It is what holds you upright. It is what helps you with your posture. It helps with your breathing. It helps with low back pain. And even those pelvic floor muscles for those, um, for women that have had children or just women in general that have aged, um, those Kegel muscles, when that pelvic floor gets weak, we end up getting a lot of low back pain too. So those pelvic muscles are really super important. And I know that Andrew can speak on this too. We've had patients where their back pain has been so significant that we have to start with just transverse abdominus holds and Kegels. So I teach that a lot in our low back, our Wellness 360 low back class of how to hold a transverse abdominus, how to do a Kegel exercise. Um, because once you strengthen those muscles, they automatically start firing the neurons and the nerve endings in those lower the multifidi and some of those other low back, deep, deep, deeper muscles. Yeah, and, and those muscles, um, the transverse abdominus as well, when you have that contracted and you're getting a good hold, it actually provides a little bit of what's called a little traction force in your spine. When you have that stable, those muscles help support. For, so for those of you that say, oh, I have um, degenerative discs, they're, they're compressed, I can't do anything for that, you can. You, you engage those core muscles, you can provide just a little bit of space that can provide a lot of relief um, when you get that trained and you get that firing properly. Absolutely. So um, we're going to move along um, to the difference between physical therapy and the Wellness 360. I feel like this is really, really, really important because um, Wellness 360 is built on being that bridge between physical therapy and regular exercise. So we know as we age, um, things happen where you can't always have... Um, you can't always participate in those, those popular classes because you know you have a disease diagnosis, you don't know what's right, what's wrong for you. So that's where Wellness 360 fits in. Now, as far as that acute right now pain or after surgery pain or the, the pain that's debilitating to your day-to-day -day function, you don't want to just jump right into exercise because there is very specific things that you should be doing now, Wellness 360, seeing that we are physical therapists working and, and designing the classes, that's one thing, but there is a starting point that you need to go to, which we would send to Genesee Valley Physical Therapy. So let's talk about the very step. Number one, if you are currently struggling with low back pain, what would they do, Andrew? Let's talk about that. So the first step is if you got in, got an appointment with us at, at uh, physical therapy, we would do an evaluation. So we would get your medical history. We would um, ask questions about your symptoms, what's going on. Do you have any what's called radicular pain, pain down your legs, that sciatica type pain? Um, what causes your back pain? What makes it feel better? We get that full history. Then we do a physical examination. So we would look at how your mobility is, how your strength is, functional tests, if you're having any difficulty with anything specific there. And we would develop a treatment plan based on that. So the treatment plan could include modalities such as heat, ice, ultrasound, electrical stimulation, or some know it as a TENS unit, um, mechanical traction, manual traction, massage. There's all sorts of things. And of course, exercise is one of the most important things. So some of those modalities might help in that acute flare up main painful stage, but then our goal is to work the exercise. If flexibility is the issue, that's what we'll find um, and we'll address it through stretching exercises or if there's a strength issue, especially the core muscles that we talked about um, quite a bit. 
then we'll give you exercises for that and we'll progress you through that to try to accomplish your goals. If your goal is just to be able to walk without pain, then that's the goal we're trying to achieve. If your goal is um, to get back into running or get back into a class you may already be doing, whether it's Wellness 360, um, then we try to get you back towards that class. And then we're kind of, a, like Beth mentioned, a stepping stone. So we kind of take you out of that real painful stage, get you on the right track, get you to understand your body individually. It's an individualized program. And then we want to get you back into the long term because physical therapy is temporary as far as going to your appointments. You don't go to physical therapists like you see a trainer for years. You go to a physical therapist when you're having your, your pain and um, we try to help be preventative, but then the Wellness 360 and the classes there can take over from where we get you. So if you have pain that's so bad you can't really exercise, physical therapy, our goal is to get you back into being able to exercise. And then when you're able to exercise, you can get back into a Wellness 360 class and they will take you the rest of the way. Beth and Lindsay will do an awesome job and get you the rest of the way and get the continuous exercise because if you just exercise for four weeks and the pain goes away, the pain's going to come back if you discontinue. You know, you're, you've got to keep moving, you got to keep exercising, and you can always accomplish new goals. And they're great about goal setting and, and trying to get you there. So uh, I the think one thing I like to relate that to is, you know, you go to lose weight and you lose your 20 pounds. And as soon as you lose your 20 pounds, you go back to McDonald's. Do you know yep. what I mean? Yeah, you're going to, this is yep. going to be a lifelong commitment. And that's the one thing good about Wellness 360 is you get your PT and we have people that go back and forth. They might hurt their self and they can't do the boxing or they can't do some of the exercises. So they shift to PT for a little while and then they come back to the exercise. And it's a wonderful thing because we want you to be successful. And unfortunately, how many of us have jumped into a gym, jumped into um, something the whole heart, you know, January 1st comes, we're all gung ho about our goals. You know, you're two weeks in the gym and within three days of that two week membership, you're done because you've hurt yourself or you've overdone it. So there's some awesome PTs out there or some awesome, awesome personal trainers out there. Um, so I don't want to knock that um, at all, but coming from someone that has a diagnosis of Parkinson's or osteoporosis or low back pain or things like that, I mean, having a PTs writing the exercises, having PTs on staff right there in the next room to, to discuss things with, you know, so knowing that everything we're writing and doing is very functional and very um, practical for your day-to-day -day living. So, um, so yes, yeah, so PT is your step number one if you're having acute back pain or long-term chronic back pain. And then, you know, it cost effective. Have you checked your insurance co-pays lately? It can get really pricey. Mm -hmm. So Wellness 360 is a really cost effective way to transition out of PT and get yourself into a regular exercise regimen. So I wanna go back there for just a quick second only because um, being a licensed massage therapist and I am the one that does all of the, the, well, I shouldn't say that. I Now Tracy and Jacqueline are there and they're doing an amazing job, but there for a while I was the only one that was doing the hands-on stuff. So um, massage is not everything. Massage makes you feel good. Massage is a definite step in the process, but you have to do the exercises. You have to do the core strengthening. You have to do the, the homework that one of us give you. It's really important. Yes, it feels good. The massage feels great. And it's awesome to come in and get your you know, 30, 45 minute massage and, and leave. But it is not gonna keep your back pain at bay. So let's talk about um, exercise and low back pain. So Andrew, can you exercise if you have low back pain? Absolutely, absolutely, in fact, you should. Um, it's a matter of knowing the right exercises. So there can be the wrong exercises and the right exercises. That's part of where Wellness 360 and physical therapy play a role, is understanding the body and being able to help you there. Um, you don't want to become sedentary because that falls into the core shutting off and that can really further the damage of the back pain. Um, it's hard. That's how you get from acute to chronic back pain is when you become 
very sedentary because of the back pain. So you should, you should exercise. And even if you're just able to walk, you know, just to get something, um, that can be very helpful. And then of course, the core strengthening and all those exercises to try to, to help stabilize the back, helps keep so the circulation going as well. When you, um, and I wanna add on to that and then I'll let you continue. When you um, are sedentary and a lot of people think, well, I have low back pain, so I need to rest. The longer you rest, the weaker the core muscles get because these deeper core muscles will turn to fat. They'll just stop. They'll stop sending nerve impulses to those muscles because they, they don't need to work. So remember the body doesn't wanna expend energy. So it saves it by just shutting it down, like turning off the light switch where she's not using these muscles. So what does that mean? That means when you try to get out of a chair, it gets harder. That means when you're walking through the grocery store, you get tired or you start having low back pain because that, those muscles are not protecting your spine. It means carrying that laundry back basket. It means uh, you know picking up your grandchildren or playing in the yard. These things are functional things. Carrying dishes from your dishwasher to put them on a shelf. These are all things that use core stabilization. So by resting for long terms, you're going to weaken those muscles. And then all of those things that I just mentioned are no more. You're not gonna be able to do them anymore. So I just wanted to throw that in there because I was thinking about it, but let's talk a little bit about the difference between sorenesses because if anyone has ever participated in one of our classes, you are going to get what's called DOMS, delayed onset of muscle soreness. That could last 24 to 48 hours, but if it is any longer than that, um, you definitely need to make adjustments in your workout. So take over from there, Andrew. Okay. I'll give yeah. it back and to you. That, that delayed muscle soreness um, is normal. Um, if, and like, like you said, Beth, if it lasts more than 48 hours, uh, that's probably a sign that you did too much. Or, and that soreness should just be like a general ache, like you feel like you did something, and it should get better over, over that time period. If you have a sharp pain, a shooting pain, during an exercise or afterwards or a throbbing, that's abnormal pain. That's pain you should not get. Um, just a little soreness, fatigue, say you did, for example, a bunch of standing up from a chair type exercise and then you just got difficult, you couldn't get up at the end of the exercise. That's challenging, that's, that's an okay type of discomfort. And I don't like to use the word pain for that, it's more of a discomfort. Um, so that's kind of the difference in, in types of pain. And, so you don't wanna be afraid of, I don't wanna exercise because it's going to hurt. Um, that muscle soreness means you did something and it should be muscle, not joint. It shouldn't be in your knee joint. It should be maybe your thighs or in, in your butt muscles. Um, those are kind of the areas. Maybe your abdomen, if you're doing a lot of core stuff, you know, you might be a little sore for a day or two. But it should be a general soreness. It should not affect your daily function. It should just be something you felt. So again, just to reiterate, sharp throbbing pain, or um, I want to add radicular pain. So yes. working out and getting those shooting pains down your leg. Um, there are some exercises. So let's say you're in one of our classes and that starts to happen. Lindsay and I can pull you aside. Have you do a couple stretches that we think that maybe there's a tight muscle or something. And then if it doesn't work, then we know, okay, there's something more going on. So, um, so any of those, so let's just um, kind of review everything and then we'll move on. If you are doing something and you end up with a sharp throbbing or radiating pain, that is, and, and it's in an acute phase, definitely give Genesee Valley Physical Therapy a call. There are so many things that can be done pretty instantaneous from getting those um, getting the inflammation down, getting, you know, using the ultrasound unit, doing some gentle stretching to make it so it's not worse. Um, and then once you get in there, getting, um, getting that inflammation down, getting your basic exercises to, to help, you do not need a doctor's prescription to go either. Some insurances, most insurances, I would think, um, do the direct access where you can just give them a call and say, hey, listen, I'm having some really bad back pain. Can I get in? When's the soonest I can get in? Um, anything else to say to that, Andrew? Yeah. And the majority of insurances in New York State will cover 10 visits or 30 days, whichever comes first which is a perfect time period to calm down that back. It might take a week or two to get it settled down 
and another couple weeks to kind of ramp up and progress a few exercises. And before you know it, you're back into your old activities again. Yeah, and that's so much better than than trying to, you know, pop a bunch of prescription um, or not over the counter meds and then resting for a week, you know, your core is weakening and then and then um, walking around with this like hitch in your gait and you're walking and then it's just kind of said, and I have so many people that say it started with low back pain, but now my right knee's hurting and my left ankle's hurting and my big toes hurting and, you know, I'm getting headaches. It's all compensation from trying to um, take care of that, that low back pain. Our body is, is a beautiful machine and our body will naturally, without you even know it, compensate for when we are hurting or it's like a protection thing. So, um, so it will step in and you're going to end up with all these other unexplainable aches and pains because of your body compensating for the low back pain. So just don't be silly. I know, um, I know it can be a pain to make those appointments, but just get in there and get it taken care of. I, I love my patients that come in for what they call their tune-ups. You know, every now and again, if they have chronic low back pain, they come in once a year, once every six months, you know, one or two treatments just to get that, that tune up, make sure they're doing well, check their measurements, decrease that little bit of pain they might start to feel again. And we have them on such a regular basis and they're so aware of their body that it takes two or three sessions and they're done. Yeah, you, you want to stay on top of it. The longer you let back pain go, the longer it's going to take to recover. So it's not it, going away on its own. No, no. And you can read stuff. There are articles and you hear things about pain goes away and it can just, you know, self-resolve. And yeah, sometimes that can happen. It's not going to happen every time. And if it happens once, it's probably going to come back again. And you yeah. probably don't want that to happen. And, and that's, yeah, you might feel back pain for three or four days and then be like, oh, it's gone. And three months later, it's back. And this time it lasts two to three weeks and it just yep. keeps snowballing. So you want to stay on top of it. You start to get it, you're going to be better quicker. So step one, um, you know, you have that acute or chronic low back pain. You're like, you know what, I'm tired of dealing with this. And now I know that it's going to start interfering with my day-to-day -day function. You start with PT. Once you've started with PT, um, and we can do preventative, if you're looking to prevent, if you're like, you know what, I have a, my family has a history of low back pain and I work in a job where things are repetitive or I play sports or whatever. If you are looking for preventative care or you're finished with your rehab and you're ready to transition that, that bridging that gap between you know, a regular, um, I shouldn't say regular, but like a gym fitness class, and your PT, um, that's when Wellness, 3C, Wellness 360 steps in. So we're very, um, we wanna make sure that when we do exercises that you are doing them correctly, that we're building these strong core muscles and a really good strong foundation. So the things that you're gonna learn from this online program and the low back pain are gonna be you know, your transverse abdominus holds, how to do Kegels, how to do um, to exercise with a neutral spine instead of some of the things. That way when you do end up going to a gym, if you decide to return, you know what's good and what's not good for your body. You know how to combat some of those bigger motioned exercises. I mean, we're talking the chest presses and the squats and all that stuff all that stuff is successful because of a strong core. If you're doing these bigger motion exercises and you don't have a strong core, you are bound to have low back pain. It's going to happen sooner or later. Um, so a couple steps um, to help you right now, right now. So when you're exercising, um, make sure you're holding that tummy tight. Make sure that belly button is nice and tight against your spine. But the key is to keep breathing. We're not mm -hmm. holding our breath. We're not, um, you're actually holding that very, very deep muscle, the TA. Um, anything else to add to that, Andrew? The way I always try to educate people on that is imagine someone, and you don't want this to happen, but if someone was going to punch you in the stomach, that tensing up or that drawing in your belly button towards your spine is a good way to kind of encourage that, that transverse abdominus hold. So that's kind of a way, or, or if you're laying down, a bowling ball is going to fall. How are you going to tense up? You're not going to stick your stomach out. You're not going to suck in. You're going to actually engage that TA muscle. Yeah, that's really, really good advice. I like that one, actually. 
Um, and then, so you're, you want to make sure that that is always being held before you do your exercise. So it seems like a lot to think about in the beginning, but eventually your body will take over and naturally do that for you. Another step, really a proper warm up and cool down. Um, even working in PT for as long as I have, I still am terrible with the warm ups. I'm like the one that jumps right out of her car and goes, but, but because of my lordosis in my spine, and my hip flexor tightness, Andrew guided me through a nice little active warm up that I could do before I went for my jog. Um, it was super embarrassing uh, because I jog super, super slow. So the warm up actually looked like it was more impressive than the actual jogging. <laughs> but it helped me to not have that low back pain when I was running. So, um, so that's another thing. I know that Andrew and the gang, they do like run smart exercises where um, if you are a runner, you want to go, they can give you um, a, um, a screening to, to watch your gait pattern and watch your running pattern and help adjust that and give exercises so you can be more successful at running. Um, and keep moving. The worst thing you can do for low back pain is to stop moving. Um, just to speak back to the, the running is we actually do running analysis as well when you come into the clinic. So We'll get you on a treadmill, um, you know, safe environment. We can actually videotape or record your running mechanics and we can find any muscle imbalances and that can carry over so you can train to run. A lot of people run to train, but sometimes you have to train to run and have that strength to try and prevent any low back pain from coming on. Awesome. Well, Andrew, it's been so great having you. I just want to do a really quick sum up of everything. So low back pain, number one is completely normal. If you haven't had it already, expect to have it because it definitely hits 90% oh, of man. our population. Um, yeah, so acute um, low back pain is maybe low back pain from doing something or your weekend warriors or mm -hmm. um, you know your, your people that you know are gardeners. Um, PT is a great step for acute pain. That's pain that's lasting, you know, less than two months and it's just really uncomfortable. The worst thing you can do is to go without treatment and to rest. Worst thing you can do. Um, chronic pain, pain that's lasted for more than three months. Um, PT is awesome for chronic pain. It may just be a muscle imbalance. It may be a postural thing. They have all of the exercises that you need for that. Um, wellness 360. So Genesee Valley Physical Therapy is where you need to go when it comes to your PT needs. You do not need a script. Call the girls at the front office. Ask them about your insurance. You should, um, most insurances allow um, to do what's called direct access, which is 10 sessions or one month of treatment with no doctor script. And then Wellness 360, we, um, we do group fitness classes for disease management. So we have an online program for low back health. So if you're wanting to get into an exercise program, that is the best place to start because it's going to teach you how to engage that transverse abdominis, how to make your future exercises more successful. If you already have low back pain, you're going to start with PT and then you're going to work your way up to that Wellness 360 program, which bridges the gap between your physical therapy and your normal fitness routine. And most of our people that start with Wellness 360, they don't go anywhere because they realize how much they're getting out of the exercises because they're written and designed by physical therapists. And, um, and you have us 24 seven to ask questions to. Same with GVPT, you have them 24 seven to ask questions to. So anything else you wanna say before we go, Andrew? Um, no, just uh, thank you for having me. And if you have low back pain, seek out treatment and keep moving. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Remember, we just launched actually today our Wellness 360 Plus online subscription plan. If you would like to learn more about that, you can click on our Wellness 360 link below. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of your Friday night. We'll talk to you soon.